Good morning, afternoon, evening, whichever time zone you're in, everyone, and welcome to our Fall 2021 FreeBSD Vendor Summit. As you can see, we are again virtual as we were uh, for our Developer Summit in June and for our Vendor Summit last year. We had hoped that maybe we would be able to be in person for this event, but it just didn't quite work out that way. We are hopeful that perhaps uh, this summer in Canada, we'll be able to meet in person again, but we're going to be virtual for today, and that's going to, that's going to be fun. We've done that a few times now. Um, so a couple of things, we have done this a few times, so there, some of the things will hopefully be a bit familiar. Uh, if you are attending um, on Zoom, that's great, but you can also watch our live streams on YouTube. Uh, if you have questions, I do think uh, you can ask questions either using the Q&A feature <clears throat> if you're attending via the Zoom webinar. You can also ask questions in various instant message or chat platforms that we'll be watching. There is a Dev Summit channel on the FNet IRC network that we'll be monitoring. You can ask questions there. Um, you can also ask them in the Dev Summit channel on the FreeBSD Slack instance and a Dev Summit channel in FreeBSD's Discord instance. Please put a Q colon prefix in front of your question so it's easier for us to spot and try to forward them on to our speakers. Let's see a couple of the things. Um, keep it, you can also ask questions on YouTube, um, and please also put a queue in front of them as well. Do keep in mind, though, that the YouTube stream is a bit delayed by a couple of minutes. So maybe that if you ask a question, we may, the, the session might have already ended, for example. Um, and also, if, if a question just comes in late, for example, on YouTube, perhaps, or if your question doesn't get answered, please feel free to follow up with the speakers after a session is over. Um, probably the best place to do that is on uh, either FNET IRC or Slack, which are bridged together. A um, couple other things before we get started further. Uh, you can see the schedule on the wiki page. So there's a wiki on the FreeBSD wiki website. If you go to Dev Summit, under there, there's a page for 2021-11 that has a schedule for today and tomorrow. And you can see the list of all the talks and, and the schedule we will attempt to, to keep to. Um, that's okay. Just a few more things <clears throat> before we get to our first talk. Um, one is I'd like to thank all the speakers who are going to be giving talks over this day and the next. Uh, can't have a summit without folks talk about the exciting work that they're doing on FreeBSD. We're really excited with what all their speakers are going to share with us. I'd also like to thank all the folks who are attending, who are going to be participating, asking questions, um, sharing with each other, kind of being in the community with each other. Uh, I'd also like to thank the team of folks who helped us organize the summit again this year. Uh, we, you know, they've been helping a lot with going behind the scenes, organizing talks, running tech rehearsals and stuff. Um, you guys are really big help, guys and girls, um, for helping this all to work really well. And I really appreciate all the work that everyone has put into having a summit again this year. And then uh, finally, before we get to our first talk, um, we're going to talk a lot about a lot of technical stuff over the next few days, because that's what we do. We're an open source project producing an operating system, so that's kind of our our lane, as it were. Um, but in addition to being a project that produces uh, a bunch of source code and does a bunch of technical stuff, we are a community of people. Um, we are a community of people. We have a lot of friendships that we have formed over the years. So we're not just a bunch of kind of, you know, people in our basements hacking on code. Like we're definitely not that. Um, but we have connection with each other. Uh, and so as a community, we rejoice with each other. I know we celebrate births and birthdays on our like our internal mail list and so forth um, for our families. Um, but there are also times when we have to share not just in rejoicing, but also share in mourning. Uh, and we lost a member of our community this week. And I'm going to turn it over to Warner um, to share some thoughts uh, about Ian. So Warner, if you're ready. So I'm ready. OK. Enough. Uh, OK. OK. So. Um, let me start by sharing the news. Uh, some of you know that are on developers that Ian Lapore passed away this past weekend. Um, there was some accident at his home and we know, uh, don't really know any more about uh, his passing. Um, but uh, Ian uh, has contributed to the FreeBSD project for years and years and years. I worked with Ian um, doing high precision time and frequency uh, systems at Timing Solutions um, uh, probably a decade ago. Uh, 
<clears throat> and both uh, working with him in person and in the project. I always admired his point of view, um, his insight, his quick wit, uh, and his um, tenacity and willingness to, to help other people um, understand what was going on and come up to speed. <clears throat> he often had unconventional views on how things should be done. And you ignored uh, listening to him at your peril because they often had a number of insights that uh, would help you solve your problems more easily. And so, um, you know, it's, it's gonna be hard to, uh, you know, not have this vibrant presence uh, contributing to the project. Um, as far as his previous D contributions, he um, contributed a lot to the embedded platforms, both uh, for ARM processor support and a number of um, auxiliary functions that go along with that. In the embedded world, there's all these weird different buses and devices, and Ian wrote a number of dri drivers for those, as well as working on um, different uh, you know, bus DMA, uh, low-level things that made the system work. And so, um, you know, it's with a heavy heart that I'm talking today and um, judging certainly from all the email that I got after I sent out this announcement. Um, I'm not going to be the only one that will be uh, missing Ian, uh, his, his charm and his wit and his uh, insight. So with that, I think we should have a moment of silence so we can Remember and honor Ian in our own ways. And after that, we'll get on with things, so. Okay, here's to Ian. Thanks, <clears throat> thanks, Warner. Um, it's uh, I appreciate it. Uh, it is an honor to be part of this community. So I know we all appreciate the friendships friendships we have with each other. Uh, so our first talk for today, I'm going to turn it over to is Deb Goodkin from the FreeBSD Foundation, and she's going to give an update um, from the foundation with what's going on over there. So I'll turn it over to Deb. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, thanks, Warner. Uh, that was really touching. Uh, what a way to start off a vendor summit. But I think it also just shows what a strong and caring community that we really have. And uh, we may not always agree with each other, but uh, when you look at who is part of this community, there's just so many not only incredibly uh, smart people, but just really caring people. And, um, and that's what I love about this community and supporting this community. So um, I will start with uh, telling you uh, a little bit about the foundation. I'm gonna share my screen here. And um, get started. So I'm Deb Goodcan. I'm the executive director of the FreeBSD Foundation. And um, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about who we are, what we do, and what we've been doing to support FreeBSD over the past year. I know a lot of you folks who are attending, you, you know who we are, but we also have people who um, are new to this. And, uh, and I want you to know who, you know, why we are here and how you can get help from us. So um, I'll try to make this quick because we do have a great lineup of talks today as well as tomorrow. So I'm really excited about this. Uh, like John said, I wanna thank uh, you for attending and whether you're attending now or you're watching the recordings, uh, thank you. And I also wanna thank the organizing committee. Uh, here's a list of, we have John, Ann, Lauren, Mark, Ed, myself, who've been uh, meeting weekly at a minimum since the last summit, which was uh, back in June, we had a developer summit. 
So thank you, everyone. So who, who's the foundation? Well, we were founded back in uh, March of 2000, so we've been around for a long time. We are a 501c3. It's a US uh, classification for taxes, but we are uh, a public charity for uh, the public good. We're based here in beautiful sunny Colorado. You can't see, but it's, it's cold, but it's really beautiful today. Um, and there are a couple of us located here. Otherwise, uh, most folks are located around the world. And we are funded 100% by donations. We are governed by a board of directors. They help uh, provide strategic direction for us. They work with us. Uh, they come from uh, different uh, technical area, typically technical areas, different um, applications and technologies. And they really just help guide us. What we're going to do, uh, Justin on the top left, is our president and founder. And he is here in Boulder, Colorado, too. And that's, that is why we're, we're based here. And so I'd like to share with you who is on our team. And you'll probably notice that um, it has grown since the last time we met. Why are we here? It's really just to, well, not just, but it's to fill critical needs of the project and to make FreeBSD the best platform for doing so many different types of applications. So what's going on? Um, so I don't have a lot of time here. In fact, I forgot to start my timer, and, but I'm trying to make this really quick. Uh, but the project comes out with a quarterly status report, and I would recommend that you go to this URL to see what's been happening in the project and the foundation over the last quarter. And, um, and you can find out over the year by looking at, very, at you know, the different status reports. But uh, the foundation does uh, publish what we've been doing, what we've been supporting. And we'll go into more detail too on some of those areas that we support in those individual status reports. There's five main areas that we support, and I'll just highlight each one of these. And I'll start with software development. And this is our software development team. We also refer to them as technology team. Uh, we typically have two interns that will work for us from uh, University of Waterloo. It's been a really successful program right now. We don't have, uh, we're not participating this term. We'll participate one or two terms a year. We'll also most likely have a few more openings next year, and we'll uh, publish or um, publicize those when we do open those. And the purpose really of this team is to step in to quickly fix bugs, to review code changes and implement new features and functionality. And like I mentioned, we uh, grew our team. We have six full-time software engineers and we also have one full-time uh, project coordinator who oversees a lot of the internal and external projects that we fund and support. Can, yes. <laughs> Um, hey, and make sure. Thing. What's up? Uh oh, uh, Warner. We need to mute Warner. I think. Um, sorry about that. And um, and so and also that project coordinator, besides doing you know project management type of work, uh, he's also helping with uh, like vendor relations, community relations, and so he'll help coordinate uh, communications and uh, uh, facilitate collaboration between like companies and, and developers. Finally, uh, let's see, Ed Mast will give a, uh, a high level tour of our technical uh, uh, roadmap tomorrow. And, um, and so he will uh, talk about this roadmap that we came up with, which is the reason why we've actually grown our team. And I would recommend that you read our blog post here before that, and so you can, uh, see what we're planning and doing and the reasons why we're doing those too. And finally, we will be having a uh, call for proposals. Um, the formal announcement should go out next week, but I just want to give people a heads up on this and um, Ed may cover it a little bit more tomorrow. He won't have a lot of time in his, his talk, but hopefully he'll, he'll touch on that a little bit. Uh, the second largest area that we support is FreeBSD advocacy and education. And uh, really our focus has been on uh, community engagement and providing more online opportunities 
to not only engage, but also to learn about FreeBSD, especially during this pandemic. Uh, so we've done this by promoting FreeBSD through presentations and workshops. Uh, we publish uh, uh, the FreeBSD journal and it's free. So please subscribe to that. Uh, FreeBSD Fridays, which is a introductory FreeBSD talk series. And we started that a year and a half ago. And I think we have 17 or 18 recordings of talks now. So you can access those on our website. Also how to guides and I like quick start and uh, quick, you know, tips uh, guides that we've been creating and we're planning on creating more as well as training material. Uh, summits just like this one, as well as the one we ran back in, in June. And then also coming up, hopefully we will have uh, the next developer summit next June or May uh, when BSD can happen. So hopefully that will be in person. Uh, we've also gotten a lot of traction on our articles that we've written on FreeBSD and other publications. And going forward, we're planning on uh, hopefully creating some uh, boot camps for developers, like, uh, for example, uh, FreeBSD for Linux developers. We've been, uh, companies have been asking us for help with us. And because companies are hiring FreeBSD developers, and a lot of times they will hire Linux developers, which is actually really great for our community. Uh, but having like a um, some really short tutorials or training material would be really helpful. So we're going to work on that. And finally, we're also working on uh, helping create content for college level operating systems courses to really get those young folks um, introduced to FreeBSD. We're also producing case studies, and here's an example of our Netflix one, and we're writing up more uh, with our technical writer. And the whole purpose really is to promote uh, successful uses of FreeBSD. Uh, we support security team by having uh, at least a couple of our staff members part of security team. We buy hardware for uh, cluster admin. And, um, and support that too. And that's to support the FreeBSD infrastructure. And then we also have a full-time uh, engineer who supports and runs the continuous integration um, work that, that's needed in the project. Uh, this is how we actually got started, was by uh, taking over ownership of the FreeBSD trademarks. So we own all the trademarks and we also provide legal support when needed uh, for the project. And usually that's coming from the core team. It might be a question on patents or S, um, SPDX, things like that. So we will provide that. And finally, face-to-face uh, -face opportunities like this. Maybe we're not in person right now. They've all been virtual um, for the last year and a half. And uh, though we have attended at least one in-person conference a couple of months ago, uh, which is great. And um, it's really so people could um, talk and meet each other and to talk about projects they're working on. And it always energizes people. It also informs people and it helps bring developers and uh, commercial users together like today and uh, to find out what's going on and find out what, um, what's needed. So, uh, so we will continue doing this and we really look forward to doing this in person again next year. Fingers crossed. And since we try to be as transparent as possible, this is our um, really our funding versus uh, you know, expenses since we started. And, um, and so we've, um, most years we've uh, met our fundraising goals as well as exceeded them. And, um, and those, the goals are in the orange and blue is where we're at. Uh, right now we're uh, a little short, we're at around 235,000 that we've raised uh, with a fundraising goal of one and a quarter million. And, and the one and a quarter million is not even covering our expenses right now. Uh, we planned on sp uh, spending a little bit more this year and taking out of our investments, which was the purpose of that. Um, we do have a lot of commitments out there. So I, I believe we will meet our goal, but I do ask you, um, especially the companies that are attending, that if you want us to continue supporting FreeBSD and increasing our support to, please consider giving us a donation. Um, and finally, I just want to throw in that uh, I was notified uh, last night that we were awarded a grant of $750,000. It's anonymous. Uh, I'm so happy that we're receiving that. So it just shows that uh, you know, people 
uh, recognize the work that you all are doing as well as the work that we're doing. And so, um, so that's actually, that's good for, for the whole project. And so with that, I um, would like to hand this back off to John.